So basically, uh, when we are doing the welding process, we have got a transformer unit. Okay, or what, what we say is the welding welding unit. Okay, and from the welding unit, we have the wires which are going to the electrode and one to the workpiece. So what happens is that let's say the welding unit is uh, producing uh, heat energy of 2000 joules. So not all the energy is utilized in melting the material because a part of the heat is basically lost. So when we are doing the welding process, uh, let's say my welding unit has uh, 2000 joules per millimeter cube of the power rated power. Okay? Rated heat per unit volume. So what happens is that a part of energy is basically lost in the wires, in the resistance of the wires. So there is one part which is lost in the resistance of the wire. Okay. Then one part is lost when an arc is produced. When an arc is produced, then what happens is that ions are produced. But what happens on the outer part of the arc, on the outer part of the arc, recombination takes place. The ions and the electrons, they combine uh, with the atom to form the natural state of atom. So when recombination takes place, there is some, uh, there is basically some kind of uh, loss of heat also. Loss of power or heat. So they are the same actually. So heat slash power. So this is kind of uh, one, uh, uh, what you call uh, heat lost in the, uh, during the arcing process. And as I so showed you in the resistance welding process, if you have got a plate, okay, then let's say this is where the melting occurred. Then a part of that melting, uh, the heat is also transferred outwards. So that portion of heat which is being uh, transferred and rejected and is not a part of melting. So this heat is not a part of melting. It is being lost to the workpiece. Okay, and that part which uh, <clears throat> is basically received uh, by uh, the workpiece for melting also, this is the useful heat only. This is the useful heat. And this is the most important heat uh, which we are, uh, which we want to calculate. How much is the amount of heat which is required for melting? Okay, so the source, if the source is producing 2000 joules per millimeter cube, then maybe for melting only, so for melting only, uh, after all the losses, after all the losses in the resistance of wires, after all the losses in the arc process, after all the losses in the workpiece, maybe only 1,500 joules per millimeter cube is left for melting only. The rest is lost, okay? So, so there is useful heat and there is heat which is lost. Lost heat. So the lost heat has to be characterized by something. We need to incorporate the losses which have been formed in our heat transfer formula. So in order to accommodate the losses in heat in the welding process, we have two factors, okay? Number one is F1 and number two is F2. These are the loss factors, F1 and F2. And usually they say that F1 
is related to the heat transfer. So F1 heat, uh, what you call heat transfer factor F1 is related to heat transfer. or heat losses and F2 is related to uh, losses in the workpiece. <clears throat> so F2 is related to the losses in the workpiece. So it is very important for us. So F1 is in this region and F2 is in the workpiece region. <clears throat> so, so the amount of heat or quantity of heat is depending on or is directly proportional to three things. Number one, heat required to raise the temperature. Until the melting point. melting point of the temperature. This is called specific heat. Once we reach the melting temperature, so the heat is dependent on the melting temperature Tm. Then the quantity of heat also depends on heat of fusion. Heat of fusion is the amount of heat which is required to transform from solid, solid state to liquid state. So all of these three factors should be incorporated to know how much is the amount of heat that is required for uh, melting my material during the welding process. So that is why the formula for amount of heat is Um is equals to K T melting square. This is my formula where Um is the unit energy to melt melt a material. We have learned this UM in the previous lecture also, but for that the formula was different. Here the formula is different. Both formula are correct. So both formula will be used as per the uh, numerical that will come. So unit energy to melt UM is joules per millimeter uh, cube. Okay. So what is K? K is a constant. K is basically constant whose melting, uh, sorry, whose uh, value in uh, Kelvin scale is 3.33 into 10 to the power 6. Okay, and then we have got our melting temperature. This melting temperature unit is absolute, absolute scale, either Kelvin or Rankine. But we will be using rank, uh, Kelvin in our course, so no need for Rankine. So this is formula number one for this is my formula for number one for 
uh, uh, um or heat required to for melting So as you can see in the diagram also, we've got a welding heat source. And then F1 is the heat losses in transferring to the workpiece, either through the wires, either through the arc, or due to the resistance of the wires or the electrodes. So all of that is accompanied in F1. F1 is the heat transfer losses, uh, heat transfer losses from the welding unit until it reaches the workpiece. And then F2 is basically the heat loss which occurs in the workpiece itself. As we saw in the resistance welding uh, video also, that what you saw is that the heat is basically transferred uh, immediately when the welding process starts. So we will move to the next slide. So there's another formula uh, available for welding, which is the uh, heat net heat available for welding which means that the amount of heat which is basically used in melting the material or welding the material is what we are interested in, okay? So, uh, so we have uh, heat energy, net heat available. So number two is net heat available. So the net heat available is denoted by H W. H W is equals to F1 multiplied by F2 multiplied by uh, H where SW is net heat, heat is uh, given in joules, and then we have got the melting factor. So, this is my melting factor, and this is my heat transfer factor, and H is the source heat this is very important source source heat what is source heat as i showed you guys in the diagram the welding unit generates a source so any heat which is generated by the welding unit within the welding unit is source heat so this is source heat as given by the welding generator, welding transformer. It can be welding generator, it can be welding transformer, it can be welding rectifier. There are different types of sources. Uh, any, each of the source have their own efficiency and they have their own, uh, what you call uh, F1, F1. F1. So the net heat available as W is F1, F2 over multiplied by H. So what is F1? F1 is equals to heat transfer factor. And heat transfer factor is the ratio of actual heat received by the job divided by the total source heat. So before uh, before it reach, before the melting happens, how much is the heat which is received by the workpiece? That is my F1. So actual heat received by the job whole divided by total source heat. This is F1. 
if you can see in the figure also so this is my source heat okay as we move on so we move on there is heat loss there is heat loss heat loss heat loss heat loss until i reach the workpiece so all the heat losses all the heat losses until i reach the workpiece is included in f1 and all the heat losses which are within the workpiece are included in f2 <clears throat> so we move back so f2 is the melting factor and f2 is basically proportion of heat received at the work uh, uh, by the work surface it is proportional to the heat received at the work surface F2 is directly proportional to the thermal properties of material. It is directly proportional to the joint configuration. If I am doing welding for a butt joint, or if I'm doing welding for a lab joint, then the heat transfer factor, oh, sorry, melting factor F2 will be different. So the heat transfer factor, oh, sorry, melting factor of butt joint will not be equal to the melting factor of the lab joint. So number one was thermal properties of material, number two was the joint uh, configuration, and number three is the thickness of the workpiece. So, thickness of the workpiece. So, now we have uh, formula for number one for net heat available. This is formula number 2.1. This was 1.0. This is formula 2.1 for net heat available. There is one more formula 2.2 for net heat available. 2.2, a similar formula, which is HW is equals to UM multiplied by the volume of the material. So SW is the net heat in joules. UM, as you saw earlier, also is the unit energy for melting. For melting. This is joules per millimeter cube. And this V is the volume. millimeter cube so this was another formula for uh, the amount of heat in the form of volume so we have two formula for SW one is proportional to the volume and then we have another formula SW uh, which is proportional to the source heat as well as the factors of uh, heat loss factors F1 and F2. 
so we have got 2.1 and 2.2 so now that i know my heat requirement now i know my heat available the net heat which is available what is the net heat which is required okay but i am doing welding at a certain speed or certain velocity so whenever i am doing some uh, welding what i am doing is i am doing it at a certain speed or a certain velocity means usually i am doing welding at a certain velocity so what i want is i want to have my heat heat unit in the form of time also i want to incorporate time so when you ever you incorporate time then it becomes rate okay so we what we need is then we need to go for the rate of heat energy received so that is 3.0 rate of heat energy received or rate of heat energy per unit time how much is the amount of heat uh, which i am going to give to the workpiece if i am moving from one direction to another at a certain velocity because we are moving during the welding process welding process is not stationary so if we are moving then we are providing heat in the form of time also so from 2.2 2.2 we divide the equation divide by time so this becomes s w over time is equals to Uh, unit energy for melting into volume per unit uh, time. So we are going to divide the equation. This factor, this factor is now rate of heat delivered per unit time. Okay. So previously S W was only uh, net heat. or sorry sw was uh, the rate of heat uh, sorry the heat given to the workpiece now this is rate of heat energy you now rate of heat energy which has been delivered okay and this is now volume per unit time is now volume rate anything with time becomes rate so this is now volume rate of melting previously my formula only had joules but since i divided it by time it becomes joules per second um is same unit energy for melting its unit is same uh unit was uh, joules per millimeter cube but my volume now is millimeter cube per second so now to get the rate of heat energy this is my formula and now we have a new notation okay the new notation is heat s w per unit time s w per unit time is now rate so we will write rate r rate of heat delivered so r h 
to the workpiece rhw so this is rate of heat energy delivered is equals to unit energy required for melting um multiply by this is the rate of uh, rrwv this is volume rate of melting so we have got new equation this is 3.1 this is now my new formula for calculating rate of welding Here in the table, you guys can see table 29.2 that we have got different materials and different materials have different absolute temperature or melting temperature. And maybe you will, you guys, you'll be using this table for uh, solving the numericals. So uh, now I need to further open this equation. Okay. Since I am doing welding process, okay. And this is my welding area. And this welding area is for a certain length. So I've got this area and I've got this length. Okay. So, and then I have to do welding at a certain speed. So if I'm going starting here, then I need to move in this direction at a certain velocity, meter or millimeter per second. Okay. So my RW, RWV or volume rate of melting can be written as area multiplied by velocity. Okay where area is the cross-sectional area and V is the velocity in millimeter per second. So I am putting this in 3.1. So put in 3.1 and we get RHW, rate of uh, heat energy delivered to the workpiece, is equals to UM multiplied by area multiplied by velocity. So this is my 3.2. Now, as I said earlier, 
uh, and as you can see in the slide also, that the amount of heat which is basically delivered in welding to the workpiece, SW, is equals to F1 multiplied by F2 multiplied by H. Okay. This is uh, from the, uh, this is something which we discuss in the net heat, I think. Uh, net heat, I did not discuss the formula. Yeah, this one, right? This one is 2.1. So 2.1, this is 2.1. Now divide 2.1 by time also. So this is SW over time is equals to F1 multiplied by F2 multiplied by H whole divided by time. So this is again R H R H W. So R H W is equals to F one multiplied F two multiplied by R H. Okay. So this was H was the source heat. So this R H is now the rate of of heat given by the source. So this is my, uh, what we call 3.3 equation. So this is equation 3.3. So now I have two equation which have the same uh, formula, or sorry, which have the same uh, parameter R H W. I have two formulas for R H W, 3.2 and 3.3. So let's equate them together. equate 3.2 and 3.3 .3. so that's when we get rhw is equals to f1 into f2 into rh this is equals to um multiplied by cross sectional area or the weld area multiplied by the velocity so this is my main equation for solving all numericals. This is my main equation. So this is how this thing came up. This is how this equation came up. So students, uh, we are going to look into welding numericals and this will be contained in the learning material video numericals and formulas for welding part number C. So we have already gone through how, uh, what are the meaning of these uh, terms such as quantity of heat in welding joules per millimeter cube, what is K, okay, which what type of constant it is and then what is TM temperature melting point in the previous uh, theory uh, video but I will just go through briefly here uh, so here in table number 30.2 you can see the melting temperature of different uh, materials or different metallic materials such as aluminium and the melting temperature is given in Kelvin scale and in Rankine scale <coughs> same goes here as well Kelvin and Rankine so aluminium alloys melt at around 930 Kelvin whereas uh, titanium melts at around 2070 
uh, Kelvin. So these are the differences in between different types of uh, metals and their melting points. So this table will be given and if this table is not given then the melting temperature Tm will be given to uh, students. <coughs> Next, we move on to rate of heat generation. The rate of heat generation, uh, which is given in uh, uh, watts, is RSW is equals to F1, the heat transfer factor, then F2, the melting factor, then the current I, and uh, E is the voltage. Okay. Now, this is also equals to uh, UM. UM, just now we saw it is the quantity of heat in welding. So, this is equals to the quantity of heat in welding multiplied by the area which is the cross-sectional area so if you got a welding of two plates then the this is the weld so this is the cross-sectional area and then V is the uh, volume uh, of the uh, weld which has been carried out so uh, these are the uh, descriptions of each term now power in this welding operation is given by power is equals to current multiplied by voltage now the heat transfer factor f1 can be determined using table 31.1 and this will be given in the exam as well table 31.1 for different types of welding we have got different heat transfer factor so it is 0 0.9 for the first uh, three and then it increases for submerged arc welding and decreases for gas tungsten arc welding so it means that heat transfer factor is different for different types of welding process. Now we are going to look at a numerical or an example, a simple one. A gas tungsten arc welding. Gas tungsten arc welding. Okay, operation is performed at a current of 300 ampere. So what is given? Given that you guys have to solve using given that. Okay. Current equals to 300 amperes next we have voltage so voltage here is given as E is equals to 20 volt then the melting factor F2 is given this is equals to 0 0.5 and the unit uh, melting energy for the, the metal UM is equals to 10 joules per millimeter cube so determine the power so power uh, is required to be determined and the rate of heat generation R H W is unknown and what else we need to know the volume of the melted material is also unknown. So the first thing is that although F2 is given but F1 is not given. So F1 should be determined using table. So this is gas tungsten arc welding so we are going to go through the table and see what is the value for gas tungsten arc welding. What is the table number? Table number 31.1 gas tungsten arc welding is 0 0.7. So we select 0 0.7 as uh, the heat transfer factor F1. So what is the solution here? So the power in the arc welding operation is power is equals to current multiplier voltage which is equals to 30 into 20. This is equals to 6000 watts. Now from table 31.1 we know the heat transfer factor F1 equals to 0 0.7. So the rate of heat used during welding is given by RHW is equals to F1 F2 into I into E. So this comes out to be 2100 watt or 21100 joules per second watt is equals to joules per second. Next the volume of material melted. So we also know that RVW. So if you go back we can see that uh, RVW is equals to RSW divided by UM. I can rearrange RVW is equals to uh, RHW divided by UM. So here we can see R V W is equals to uh, 21000 multiplied by divided by 10. So here they were asking R V W not volume but R V W. Okay. So R V W is the volume rate of metal welded. Okay. Volume rate of metal welded. So volume rate of metal welded is equals to uh, R H W divided by the uh, UM which is uh, um is equals to the unit melting energy for a metal so this comes out to be joules joules cancel each other out comes out to be millimeter cube per second so this is a very important welding numerical that all students should practice and go through